I always tell women, like, the first thing I ask women is, well, are you comfortable? And this is a very simple expect. Like, are you even comfortable saying your age publicly? You know, there are lots of women that can't even do that. Oh, because I know. All, because it's all based in that thought of, oh, no, I'm old. I no longer matter. <laughs> Think about it. When you were 16, you would say your age, and your, you know, your 20s. And then after a while, it became suddenly, you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to say my age. And then who is this? You know, people say things like, oh, it's not ladylike to ask a woman her age. Says who? Like, see, those are those little statements that we think are great, but perpetuate this whole feeling that you no longer back when you get to a certain age. Hey, everybody, it's Diane Gilman, formerly known as the Queen of Jeans, but now the prod host of my own podcast named after my second book, Too Young to Be Old. And today we have someone who I think we were twins separated at birth, except I'm about 40 years older. But uh, but don't let that stop me. We have Kwabi. And Kwabi is a life coach, but she's most passionate about helping women age boldly in their 50s. And she asks a question, which is the title of her book. What's your answer to 50 questions when you reach 50? And, you know, I ask myself so many questions when I reach that midpoint in life. So, Kwabi, a pleasure to have you. And I know we can't go through 50 questions, but I would say, what are the five important questions a woman should ask herself as she hits 50? I think the first one I would say is, and I'd like to look at it from the context of, if your doctor came today and said, okay, you know what? You have a year to live. What are some of the things you would start doing? What are the things you would stop doing what are the things you would care more about and what are the things you wouldn't even care about? Like, looking at from that perspective, I think is very important because we're getting older. This is our time. Go ahead, Diane. You yeah, you something? know, I, I thought to myself, and, and honestly, having a life-threatening disease like breast cancer makes you do just that. But I don't wish for anybody else to have to go through a disease to get to a point where you say to yourself, okay, time to realign my values. Time to take away stress from my life. Time to become kinder, become more charitable, join organizations that form female community. Everything you just mentioned is something I did because it was all triggered by the thought mm. that, honestly, really, I might have only a year left yeah. to live. And I found that one of the things that was absolutely the toughest for me was learning how to allow enjoyment to flow in. I somehow have this thing where you've got to be productive 24 7 and interesting I think, yeah you know what was really fascinating to me Kwabi was um and somebody came up to me yesterday on the streets of New York and said oh we miss you on tv and you need to come back to HSN and da, da, da. and I couldn't really be honest I just sort of said thank you very much and that's yeah. touching it's kind of not going to happen but the real truth was when I came back to television after almost a year off saving my own life, um, yes. I asked myself one question. Do you still love every moment mm -hmm. of it? Yeah. And when the answer was no, I thought, second question. Do you want to do this for the rest of your life? Because I couldn't. Mm, and the yes. answer was no. I was shocked and I was scared. And I think when you talk about the five important questions to ask yourself past 50, some of those questions have to be based and rooted in I've done this forever. I can go on doing it forever, but is that what's best for my soul? That is the true question. And I think 
for a lot of women, I don't know if it's fear or whatever, but they are scared to even confront that question to themselves and even responding, forget responding, but they don't want to ask themselves that question. You know, I felt crazy. I felt like I was, I, it wasn't that I wasn't grateful for the life I mm -hmm. had, but when I really assessed what I was as a younger woman, I was a risk taker. I was always mm. looking for yeah. how to make it better, how to build on it, how to make the foundation stronger on my business. And um, the biggest risk of all would have been leaving a 50-year fashion career and a 30-year television career and saying, I think I can do something else. I think I can do something bigger. I think yes. I can do something that's more charitable, that's going to benefit more people, in my case, women over 50. Yeah. What brought you to this field? Why did you choose over 50 females? And especially, I, I highly doubt that you could have anticipated how threatened as females younger females too we are today so if we were devalued before as over 50 females we aren't even chopped to liver in in most of these guys minds you know most of the men that are doing this are, are uh um well over 50 in politics and probably have no idea what goes through a female's head but i know when i turned that. 50 there were things that just shocked me. I mean, men didn't mm -hmm. want to pay, didn't want to, didn't. No matter how good I looked, if there was a 30-year-old woman standing beside me, not good-looking, not well-kept, not well-dressed, they would win out every time, just age alone. How do you teach self-esteem? Because for most of us, past the age of 50, we feel like it's our fault. We feel like we've lost it somehow. I think the reason why a lot of women feel that way is because their values are rooted in the way they look. Like, but this is the thing. And it's also not just based on the way they look. It's based on the look that's based on youthfulness. Well, we don't look the same. But that's not wrong. It's like we have to be we have to change our belief. I call it our aging belief. As we get older, our belief changes. So if your belief was rooted in, oh, I look a certain way, as you get older, you're going to look different. And so does it mean that you're no longer a value? It just means that we need to change our belief system that we matter regardless of the way that we look. We're amazing regardless of the way that we look because we are still the same person. It's just the outward. We're different. I always Use an example of like a dollar bill. You have a new dollar bill, crisp and new, and you have a dollar bill that's all wrinkled and looks old. The value, exactly the same. Uh, Only difference is it looks perfect. different on the outside. Oh my God, that's brilliant. That is so true. brilliant. You know, it's and it, to me, it's a little hurtful because I've been in front of the camera for so long and people will say to me, well... You're almost back to the way you used to look. And I thought, I can never go back to the way I used to look. I had red dyed hair. It was pre-cancer. It was very different. Maybe the one thing that I constantly cultivated was my energy level. Keep the energy consistent and the same and not easy. But, you know, I, I was obviously educated because you've got to put the same amount of energy into a podcast as you do to a TV <laughs> show and constantly keep it going. But um, that was so, that is so crazy to me. And I hear it all the time. And the answer was, I'm not trying to look. Thank you. I think that's I the important piece. That's in, and I think that's where the media gets it wrong. They think we want to look younger. No. We want to look younger. We want to look the way we are. You know, we, we don't want to look. And it's like they keep putting all these different products, anti-aging, look younger. 
they have got it all wrong. We are not trying to aspire to be a younger version of ourselves. Because you'll Which never win. To- we you never win. It's like a never ending battle. You're going to be frustrated. Yeah. You're going to be depressed about it. Let's, let's start to look at who we are and embrace who we are and challenge these norms that we no longer matter because we're a certain age. Says who? I mean, people will make comments like, oh, 50 is a new 30. I always, I always say, no, no. I hate we're not going that. There. 50, 50 is the new 50. 50. <laughs> 60 is the new 60. 70 is the new 70. Our version of how we are. Is different from our mothers and grandmothers. And the sure. media and people need to watch it. You know, they need to learn that. We are changing it. You know, I'll tell you something so interesting. When I grew up and I was born in 1945, the thing was you wanted the the paradigm of femininity in America was the president's wife, the first lady. Mm-hmm. So I remember it was Mamie Eisenhower, mm-hmm. and she had these little things that were heat curled to be one curl going across, and I would scream and cry every morning, and my mother would insist I sit there and get <laughs> Mamie Eisenhower bangs. And I remember even clothing was... Mm-hmm. Just a smaller version of a, an older <laughs> woman, Person. right? There wasn't, you went from real infantile clothing to wow. just a, 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 a version of an old woman's clothes. But a miniature then, version, right? Oh my God, the 60s <laughs> hit me, and you could actually, as a woman, wear a pair of jeans. That was so shocking and and that probably is why i obsessed about jeans for so much of my life because they became such a sex symbol and a freedom symbol to me but you know when i came out of breast cancer um i could have gone back to dyeing my hair again but i wanted to be authentic I felt if I was going to do something else with my life and I was going to try and be a beacon of light for my community of older women, yeah. then I should own it. Right. Exactly. Every single friend I have who has white hair, bleaches, highlights it blonde and I asked one of my best friends I said she said oh my god Diane I love your hair I said well if you love it so much your hair is the same color why not and she said oh no 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 oh, no, no, no 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 I'm not ready for that yet I I'm said you're 70 yeah. years old when are you going to be ready for it so there is something so rooted in American yeah. oh, my society goodness. Yeah. That you, as an older woman, you are pushed away. You are silent. Yes. You're not to be seen and you're not to be heard. And you yes. have nothing of value to give to society. And just go away. And exactly. we are now over 50, men and women together, over 50 are the majority of America. We are a growing nation. And women are 52% of that. So we are actually the majority of over 50. And what is it going to take, in your estimation, to get us to a level where we get what we deserve, which is attention, respect? I just don't know. Yeah. I think conversations like this are a great start. I always tell women, like, the first thing I ask women is, well, are you comfortable? And this is a very simple expect. Like, are you even comfortable saying your age publicly? You know, there are lots of women that can't even do that. Oh, I know. Because it's all based in that thought of, oh, no, I'm old. I no longer matter. (laughs) Think about it. When you were 16, you would say your age, and your, you know, your 20s. And then after a while, it became suddenly, you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to say my age. And then who is this? You know, people say things like, oh, it's not ladylike to ask a woman her age. Says who? Like, see, those are those little statements that we think are great, but perpetuate this whole feeling that you no longer back when you get to a certain age. Yeah, really? because there is such a phobia 
about aging. And yet I always quote this. I always quote Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. He was being interviewed about being about to turn 80. How did he feel about that? And he said, life is a funny thing. Nobody wants to grow old, but nobody wants to die young. So thank you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that is so true. In fact, um, Helen Mirren has a, a statement that's very similar to that, where she says, you either die young or you grow old. There is no in between. So we don't have, I don't know about you and how you feel about it, but for me, for instance, how to style white hair. A, Mm -hmm. there's no products out there in the market for white hair. The one purple shampoo I use for Morabe, my hair turned fucking purple. And see, that's the the market that that, that people are missing out on. Can you imagine? That is why. We have so much money to purchase these things. (laughs) But you just brought up another fascinating point. We are the spending power of America. We are. are. And yet, it's almost like that old saying, all dressed up and nowhere to go. Tons of money, tons of bills in my pocket and nowhere to spend them. Because nobody makes clothes that help us. They just make clothes where you're praying to yourself and you're not even breathing when you go to try it on. Like, please, God, make it just fit 50 uh, percent. Yeah, I mean, we, ha- we have no imagery. I mean, occasionally you have a 50 year old woman like, let's say, Jennifer Lopez. But come on. I think they need to show all the variations because it isn't a one size fits all for over 50 and beyond. But they I look don't at, you know, that. ads. That's the thing. They are missing out on a huge opportunity. Huge. Just think about it. Like all the ads that you see, I'm like, why aren't we driving? Why aren't we in all these car ads? We buy cars. We buy cars a lot. We're not in. You. They show ads for people going on vacation. The only so so us one is a multi generational family. But come on, we are going on vacation. I just came back from Morocco for a 60th birthday party. We had a destination party. How in fabulous. God. I mean, we are celebrating ourselves in ways they can't even imagine, and they're not even targeting us. And they don't want to know. You know, it just keeps going back to that same thing. If you're not the shiny new penny in the coin purse, throw it out. And the point is, we are living longer. We are working longer. We are literate and have so much more to say. And I constantly feel like I'm punching my way through the universe. I'm trying to find that hidden door that I'm going to open. And it's going to be nirvana for over 50-year-old women on the other side. But I think, uh, honestly, Kwame, I think until there comes a point in the advertising world where you are regularly booking gray and white haired, silver haired models and saying, see, it this can look good. It's okay. What I find with women my age, and I'm in my late seventies, is they have no idea any of this can happen. So yeah. they always look at me a little bit like, what language are you speaking? You're not speaking it's okay. English. It's okay, though. <laughs> We're making the difference. <laughs> but little by I little. would like to make them, I would like to make them happier about where they yeah. are. What I think is for the way, for what we have in front of us to help us, you, you almost have to take your, would you agree, your own individual journey because there's no online tutorials in like, oh, none. <laughs> what do you do with white hair? Or what do you do with wrinkles? Or what do you do for me? Um, you know, this hair is so different. And it grew in, obviously, after chemo. But um, white hair should have its own place. Oh, in yeah, the beauty sure. world, because it needs its own individual product. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I definitely agree. And I think it's, there are so many little pieces. But I think for me, one of the things that helped me, and I think it's more cultural. Yeah. Because I was born in England, and then 
I went to Nigeria for middle and high school. That's where my dad is from. And I will tell you this. I still remember vivid images of women in their 50s and 60s and 70s celebrated. And so that always stuck with me. And so when people would have conversations about, aren't you worried about getting older? I'm like, no, I'm excited about getting older. And some would look at me like, are you serious? But that's where it stems from for me, because I already have this belief system that getting older is a beautiful thing. Like, and see, really. for me, my mother was 45 when she had me in 1945. That was unheard of. She got very sick in pregnancy. They wound up about a year and a half, two years later, having to give her an emergency full hysterectomy. She absolutely changed personality mm, instantly. There yeah. was no hormone replacement. There was yeah. no nothing. It was just no support. And mm. I so my vision was oh my God. This is female Armageddon. There's and my mother used to tell me there's no life for a woman after 30. If you are not married by 30, if you haven't had children by 30, if you don't have your whole personal affairs settled by 30, there's no hope for you. Because to, in my mother's mind, you as a female were pretty much disqualified from 30 on. And then it was interesting for me to go into two professions, fashion and television that were both completely beauty slash Driven. youth <laughs> obsessed. For sure. <laughs> and not even have my shining moment in fashion until the age of 60, unheard of. But the good news was I was on a form of TV that had an older demographics mm. for a viewer. So they forgave you. <laughs> for growing older because they were growing older with you. With, oh, I, think, gotcha. I think that the one thing that you do as a younger woman is, first of all, you take a lot of stuff for granted. Perfect body, eat what you want, you know, drink what you want, no problem. And your hair is always going to grow and be healthy and that and that. And then you hit a certain age and suddenly none of that is taken for granted anymore. And do you not find, I sort of make a game out of it, how to take care of my hair, vitamins for it, this for it, products for it, my skin, everything. But I think you got to be pretty devoted to it to work your way through this labyrinth of getting older. Oh yeah, you have to. And especially with the, you know, around you, there's not real support for that. So no. you, you're you like the Lone Ranger just trying to figure out things on your own. And then people are looking at you like you're crazy. But, you know, you keep doing it or you wear certain things and like, oh, you're going to wear that? Like, why not? I mean, why can't I wear that? You yeah. know, isn't that interesting? But, you know, the other thing I think, too, I think that younger women are consistently terrified at the thought of that change of life wall that you're going I to hit. And it's I, up to it's up to advocates like you and I to yes. say. So I look to Asian society, and that's partly because honestly, I lived in Hong Kong on and off for two and a half years, and so I saw a totally different point of view. Mm. Aging, aging for women, women became matriarchs. Women became the most revered part of society. And older women, actually, even if your son married a younger, much younger wife, you were still the head of the household, but even more as an older woman. Now flip that to Western society like America. I think the one thing that I, I'm very, very interested in seeing come to a conclusion mm -hmm. is now that younger women's bodily rights have in many ways been taken away from them, do we bond and, and marry to them more strongly because we come together as a female community and society 
not begging, but almost demanding to be heard and respected. I wonder if it's going to work that way. What do you think? I'm hoping it does because the bottom line is we're all female. (laughs) You know, we all have these female parts. So I think this is a great opportunity. Now, will that happen? Not so sure. But this is a time for us to really bond together and kind of get that force where we can make demands. And it starts with this. Like, we get this and then we can get more. And we can get more, you know? So I think the one very important thing is for... Many, many years, I've seen that younger women are standing way over here and they're standing strong and life is pretty easy when you're younger. And older women are down a few notches and kind of pushed over to the side. But honestly, younger women need us to help fight the battle. They do. And I think that's why these conversations are so important because... I want to get to a point where they're looking for, I mean, I, I will never forget. A younger person sent me an email. He's like, listen, with all the things you talk about, I can't wait to get older. I want more younger women to stop feeling that way because they see that it's not all downhill, you know, because that's the image that that's being portrayed. Isn't so that like, terrible? Oh, yeah, it is, it is terrible. Like there are some amazing things about getting older and, how you can decide to, you know, just reinvent yourself if you want to. Yeah, Uh, starting a whole new business and a whole new career in a new field. And I find it extremely exciting, very um, life-affirming. And I feel like I'm really using my brain and and learning something new every day. When the advice people gave me was... uh, Oh, now you can just sit back and do <laughs> nothing. And I thought, you know, that is the fastest way to die is is it's to what you just want. give up your placeholder in society and just sort of float away like a balloon with a tiny hole in it. And I I think that what we've got to do is change the viewpoint for younger women of what aging is currently and can be. You may exactly. you may devote a great part of your youth as a female to raising children and suddenly at 55 or 60 when the house is empty nest you realize maybe you dreamt about doing something when you were young but you never did anything never about did. it. Now is your time, and I will say also, I think it's a time for the female entrepreneur. Oh, my I word. Think, so much. Yeah. Isn't it? So whether you're young or old, if you've got a great invention, a great idea, yeah. bring it on Instagram. Bring it on oh, yeah. TikTok. Oh, yeah, you don't exactly. have to invest in brick and mortar retail. You don't have to hire a ton of employees. You've just got a very direct, very good idea that you can explain in front of the camera and go straight to the public. And that is also where I feel we are truly missing out over 50. There aren't, there have to be some of us that turn around and give everybody else in our age group permission to start something new, permission to be creative. Yes, yes. And then when they see that, like, oh, she's doing it. Maybe I can do it too. Of course you can. Like, For sure. Yes. And of course. <laughs> and of course you can. And now I see a bit of that on TikTok, my very favorite. And, um, you know, it's people that have, maybe they're like me and they have pets and they invented some hairbrush for pets that's a hundred times better. Whatever it is, and especially if you have spent a great part of your youth in the corporate world, I can guarantee you 100% corporate is never going to respect you or particularly want you past the age of 50. But the rest of the world will if you present the idea. So So, as a final question. How did you come to be so fascinated by helping women after 50 and trying to get them to form 
a really good mind image because really and truthfully, here's what's so fascinating about Too Young to Be Old, where I'm saying it's all in your head. You can always remain too young to be old. Um, we thought we were going to hit an audience that was specifically 60 and beyond, but we find that 45 to 50% of our audience is 24 to 49 because younger women want to know how to do it. Exactly. And you have a very big point where you talk about how to live and correct your regrets and regret proof of your life and move on. So final question, how do you do that? And what would be, what would have been your biggest regret as a younger woman? And how did you come to regret proof your life? I think for me is like when I have those nudges and I know all of you listening have those nudges that you keep suppressing. That is life telling you that is that piece of your life that you need to act on. When I have nudges, I go for it. In my 50s, I took part in a beauty pageant. When I was 16, I had watched an ad for beauty pageant. I wanted to do it. I was like, nah, I won't do it. But it kept coming up. In my 50s, I competed and I won um, Miss Georgia. Um, for a, a particular pageant. And, but then, you know, but people are like, what are you doing that? I'm like, you know what? I'm going after a goal I've had for a long time. This is not about yeah. anyone else but me. Yeah. yeah. And, and we all have those things. And it doesn't matter what others say. Sometimes you might not even get support from people around you. But I say go for it. Because you, it's hard to explain that sense of fulfillment when you go after your own individual goal. We all it's so have true. that. Tell- it's so true. And I always have a saying, today is the youngest you will ever be. Thank you. Take advantage <laughs> of that. But the other thing that I would say as a closing remark, and I wonder if you agree with me, most of the people that give me advice are 30, 40 years younger than me. They have no idea what the hell they're talking about. (laughs) This is definitely, in every respect, different territory. And sometimes people say to me, oh, my God, Diane, you're so impatient, or you really demand these results. And I always say the same thing. You're 30. You may have 70 years ahead of you. I'm almost, and so a year out of your life, just kind of screwing around and not being totally focused and whatever, you've got many years to burn ahead of you. But I, if I'm really lucky, have about 22, 24 years if I'm really optimizing my aging. And time means something very different. I agree. To us. For sure. Oh, yeah. You have a guarantee. We have... I see it as a blessing to be 56 right now. And so I want to make sure, I I always say like, I strive for perfection, but I'll settle for excellence. Like in everything that I do. You know, I'm just going to keep ahead, but I'm going to put my all in. I'm going to do like a 50%. Why? Like, I'm going to put my all in and see what happens. Because, you know, I always say the same thing, Kwavi. Past 50, it ain't a dress rehearsal anymore. It's... It's the real deal, okay? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I thank you so much. And I hope for anybody out there in the audience that's younger, that you see from us, aging is a privilege and a pleasure, not a punishment. I thank you, Kwame. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So good. It was great. Thank you so much for listening to Too Young to Be Old podcast. The episode may be over, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at The Diane Gilman, or visit our website, thedianegilman.com. If you like the show, leave us a rating or a review, and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And until then, don't forget, age is just a number. Together, we'll prove that we are all too young to be old.